We are at the cusp of a fourth industrial revolution, this bio-revolution, and the Department of Defense is eager to harness the value proposition that's being offered here. Synthetic biology is something that for years has been around and been being developed especially for making new chemicals, but we're really just at the forefront of learning what we can really do to make new materials for a variety of different applications. We've heightened biotechnology and material science to uh, one of our top priority research areas so that we have the people and the apparatus to be able to really harness the value of biotechnology over the next several years for the benefit of the warfighter. The U.S. Army's Chemical Biological Center is the premier lab in the world for combating chemical and biological threats. We really have the ability at the ChemBio Center to span early fundamental research all the way through applied research and testing fielded materials, which is something that you just don't find anywhere else. BEAM stands for Biological Engineering for Applied Materials Solutions. Its main goal was really focused around how to use synthetic biology and biological engineering for making new and novel materials. When we started the BEAMS program, we had great material scientists, we had great biologists, we had great chemists, we had great engineers. But getting them all speaking the same language was something that was incredibly difficult. One thing that we did was we had a lecture series where we had our internal subject matter experts teach each other. We brought experts on various aspects of material science and biology to share some of their knowledge. We also did a team-based activity where we got the scientists together to work in the lab and uh, work on a hands-on problem. There are a lot of people at the center with a lot of really diverse skills. Once you just sort of put the idea out there and allowed some people to interact with you, amazing stuff can really start to happen. The Synthetic Biology for Military Environments program brought together Army, Air Force, and Navy scientists. We worked together um, on synthetic biology problems. Cell-free systems are an important synthetic biology platform. We are able to use all of the active components you find inside cells activated outside of the context of a membrane-bound organism. With a lot of modern materials techniques, we've come up with ways of taking reactions that previously had to happen in a container in a laboratory and literally have them laid down on a simple piece of paper. We have some paper-based sensors that are effective against chemical warfare agents like sarin or VX, or biological hazards too, things like anthrax and ricin. The end result on the sensor is essentially the same, and it is a little spot that starts off one color and changes to a completely different color to indicate that that threat is present. At the ChemBio Center, not only do we make a lot of things in-house, but we work with a lot of external collaborators at universities, as well as within industry. So what this allows us to do is take early fundamental research and then work with industrial partners to make them into real products that we can put into warfighters' hands. The VOC kit is a little portable reader. We'd made these little tickets that had about 80 different spots of dye on it. Uh, this is way too complicated for somebody to read by eye, so we knew we needed a machine to read them. We probably worked with three different companies. One was the company that was working with the arrays for us, and one of them was making injection molds for us, and another one was integrating circuit boards for us. One of the collaborators that we work with is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They have a very unique uh, way for making novel carbon materials. We can incorporate in oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur groups, in very specific spots and have them be able to interact with chemical threats in a way that we've developed. Within the ChemBio Center, not only do we have the ability to synthesize and make new materials, we have the ability to uniquely characterize these materials. We use a number of different techniques for studying the chemical interactions on these new materials that we're developing on an ultra-high vacuum chamber, we introduce that surface to chemical agent, um, chemical contaminants, uh, pollutants that might be in the atmosphere, and we can use our IR spectroscopy at the same time as our mass spectrometry, and then we can see how the surface has changed using something like XPS. With the new chambers that we have, we can go all the way up to atmospheric pressure. This is really advantageous for the BEAMS program because some of these studies involve biological samples. Prototyping, getting things into the hands of the warfighter and letting them break it is critical. That requires not 
milligrams of material, but kilograms of material. Here at Aberdeen Proving Grounds, we have the only pilot scale biomanufacturing facility that exists within the Department of Defense. Over the next several years, we're gonna conduct a multi-phase upgrade of that facility. We're going to first increase the capacity. We're at 1,500 liter fermentations now. We're gonna move up to 5,000 liters. Advanced Materials has become central to the way we are uh, choosing and selecting and prioritizing what we manufacture in the facility. At the Chem Bio Center, you have a real opportunity to grow a career here. The projects that we work on are very riveting and things that we can see go from fundamental science right into real world products. The center values generalists because our mission changes as the need of the warfighter changes. So we're encouraged to continue to develop throughout our careers, take on new skills and try new challenges. Getting to work with this high-end equipment and apply it to a real-world problem, and also a problem where we're talking about how to protect our soldiers, it really gives a lot of meaning to what you do when you come to work every day.